For example, that's the reason why a lot of kids that are born to immigrants, when they move to the UK, when they move to the United States, when they move to any developed country, what do we notice? We see it all the time, right? They're taller than their parents. Hey, what's going on? Megan here. All right, so today is Friday, so we're going to talk about uh, fun facts, right? So we're going to go to the Reddit, and we're going to answer questions relating to genetics, mostly. So let's click here, genetics. All right, so let's pick this question. Uh, let me fold it up. Are Scandinavian people tall just because of protein intake? For those who don't know, obviously, uh, Scandinavians, especially the Dutch, are the tallest motherfuckers in the world, right? Average height, especially in Denmark, is over six feet for men. Uh, for women, I think it's five seven, five eight. Don't quote me on that. Um, I'm pretty sure it's close to five seven. But uh, they are tall as shit, right? And obviously, they were not always that tall, right? I think in the last hundred years, they gained like eight inches. So he's asking, are Scandinavian people tall just because of protein intake? For those of you who also don't know, uh, the number one predictor of your height, apart from obviously genetics, is animal protein intake, right? High quality animal protein intake. Uh, that's not my opinion. There's a ton of studies on that. People have been studying height for fucking generations, right? Um, and the biggest correlation is animal protein intake. The, the people who eat the most animal protein, so meat, dairy, stuff like that, are uh, on average taller. And the people who eat the lowest amount of animal protein um, are shorter. And obviously, for you know, you guys know, protein intake affects IGF-1 and growth hormone and things like that when you're a child. But anyway, so uh, he's asking, are they tall just because of protein intake? No, it's never. there's never just one thing that causes something, guys. It's always a combination of factors. Obviously, number one, like I said, you have genetics. I even mentioned in the comment, um, you can give a pygmy all the protein in the world, all the animal protein in the world. He's going to be slightly taller than the average uh, pygmy, but he's not going to be, uh, you know, yeah, I mean. Right, so obviously genetics are number one, um, but again, that's common sense, so let's get that out of the way. So apart from genetics, number one is obviously animal protein. Uh, the second reason why they're so tall is obviously healthcare, right? Remember, guys, if you sick a lot, let's say you, uh, you're surrounded by, let's say you sick a lot as a kid, right? You grew up in an environment that's full of pathogens, full of illnesses, whatever, you're going to be shorter no matter how much protein you eat simply because, again, your body's going to use a lot, a lot of your resources towards your immune system, towards keeping you alive, as opposed to maximizing things like height, muscle mass, uh, you know, reproduction and things like that, right? You know, because obviously to grow tall, that takes a huge um, amount of resources as far as nutrients, calories, you know, hormones, things like that. So healthcare is the second reason. So number one is protein intake, right? We're not going to mention genetics because that's common fucking sense. Um, but no, number one is protein intake as a child, of course, growing up. Um, number two is obviously healthcare. They also have one of the best healthcare systems in the world, depending on what, um, depending on who's doing the, the measurement, usually the number one or number two, but they're always in the top five, right? The Scandinavian countries are always at the top when it comes to healthcare, right? Because then again, the, the body doesn't have to drain a lot of its resources while the son of a bitch is growing um, to focus on immune system and and fighting of pathogens and things like that. And obviously the third reason, and that brings us back to genetics, which is sexual selection. Again, common sense, right? Um, if you tall as shit due to, let's say, great animal protein, uh, great healthcare, but you constantly reproduce with a pygmy, the kid is gonna come out obviously short, right? Again, taller than the average pygmy, but still short. So you also have to factor in uh, sexual selection. The fact that in uh, in Denmark, the women are obviously picking the taller man, and that's pretty much the, the case almost all around the world. But for some reason, in um, in the Scandinavian countries, it's a lot more pronounced, right? So obviously, sexual selection is going to kick in, and for some reason, a lot of them are also picking taller women. Whereas in other countries like the U.S. and and in some parts of Asia and Africa, men are actually picking shorter women. So again, you have a lot of sexual selection uh, at work, but like I said, it's mainly protein intake, healthcare, and again, sexual selection, and obviously, all of that has you know is under the umbrella of genetics right because genetics is always the number one reason you obviously have to combine it with the environment right right because genetics can't do anything without genes can't do anything without the environment right without nutrition healthcare, blah 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 you know selection um but genetics are at the bottom of everything for example the actual the tallest people in the world not country but people in the world obviously the dinka of uh you know east africa and what's fascinating about them is again once again they have good animal protein you know a lot of them uh lactose tolerant so a lot of milk a lot of dairy um a lot of meat the health their health care system is obviously not as great as the scandinavian so that makes you wonder how tall will the dinka of uh east africa how tall they will be if they actually had amazing health care but once again they also have the genetics for high. remember a lot of genes um, play a role in height, a ton of genes. So you could have the best healthcare system, best diet. If you do not have the genes for something, 
you know, all the environment does is activate genes, you know, turn on and turn off genes, you know, epigenetic, transcription. If you don't have the genes for something, you fucked, right? You can find other ways to overcompensate, but for something like height, you got to have the genes for height. Nutrition and healthcare just activates those genes. For example, that's the reason why a lot of kids, uh, uh, you know, a lot of kids that are born to immigrants, when they move to the UK, when they move to the United States, when they move to any developed country, what do we notice? We see it all the time, right? They're taller than their parents, right? Their parents are short as fuck, but then the kids are towering over them. Again, better healthcare, better nutrition, right? So you can't sleep on the combination between genetics and environment. Scandinavians and the Dutch had their genes for height, but it took healthcare and nutrition to activate those genes with a dash of sexual selection. But anyway, hope that answers your question. See you guys in the Reddit and the comment section. All right, guys, don't forget to like or share the video, subscribe and hit the bell, and buy my HSP Nucleus of a Low Training Program. It's the ultimate program for maximum muscle growth. It includes full body workout splits, bro splits, push pull, home workouts, you name it. Also comes with a complete guide for macros, nutrition, fat loss, muscle growth, hormones, including a meal plan. It's pretty much all my 16 years of experience condensed into one fucking book. You're also going to get free copies of any future edition. So visit team3dalpha.com and you can use the 40% off coupon code Nucleus of Lord. Or you could just buy the shit at full price. Alright guys, I'm out of here.